Hey sailors, I'm Alex, this is Mandy. We live on a boat because we want freedom and find happiness. We choose to live life on our own terms, taking credit for our successes and paying the tolls of our shortcomings. We're starting a family now and get ready to cross an ocean with a baby. We're preparing the boat in Gran Canaria on the Canary Islands, where most transatlantic sailors start their crossing. Subscribe and join us as we turn our boat into a home that takes us far. With our kit Leafy on the way, we are optimizing the aft cabins for comfort and optimize our storage, energy and water supply. Last week we worked on soft and cuddly things. It's going well. This week we we'll work on wires. We have a lot of energy cash flow from the panel and we're full around 11, 11.30, no matter what we do. Oh. Holy. oh geez, it gets bigger. Oh my God. So we thought we might give it a try and see if we can use the sunshine of the afternoon to put more energy in our boat. So on good days, we generate up to two kilowatt hours, but right now, all this energy is lost. So let's see if we can get everything out of those panels. We decided to get an inverter because since we installed our new panel, we have excess energy. Our house battery is full at noon and the panel has a whole afternoon of leftover energy. So with a proper inverter, we can get some power hungry land-based luxury, especially for the galley. We are done with toying around and get proper devices now. Our inverter will be mounted in the storage cabin and directly plugs into the boat's 220 volt system in a smart way so that it automatically takes over when we unplug from shore. So we currently have a shore power socket and a single cable that leads to our main junction box. To keep the drawing simple, let's just call the sockets instead and leave out the breakers and the ground fault circuit interrupters. So we install the inverter and a switch box. As long as we have power from shore, the box chooses shore. And when we disconnect from shore, the switch box takes power that is supplied by the inverter. That way, we can use all the sockets that are already installed on the boat compared to having just one single socket that's typically placed on the inverter itself. We also have an additional lithium battery, the EcoFlow Delta. With the inverter, we can top up this extra lithium battery quickly at noon and then let the solar panel recover the house bank. And then we can use the lithium battery for short-term heavy loads, which helps reduce stress on our AGM battery house bank. So initially we wanted to get the 1600 watts, but on the island the choice was 1000 or 2000. And 1000 watts is just a bit too little, so we got a 2000. And that is considerably bigger, but we'll find a way. It looks nice. Good. Let's do it. Today I'm mounting the inverter to the wall and the Victron comes with all the necessary pieces to mount it to the wall, including wood screws, which I replaced with non-self-tapping ones, because I believe I'm going to have them stick out on the other side of the cabin. So I want them to look nice and then I can drill them down with a nut. This one is the plate that you hang it on, apparently called a French cleat system. The Victron mounts into these little grips and then you connect it on the bottom with two additional screws and then it's basically foolproof mounted and you can take it off again. The footprint on the wall is just five little screws. I'm gonna check out the exact location where I want it and then make the first hole. Until now I only had to screw holes or drill holes under the bunks but now it's gonna be in the pretty pretty glossy cherry wood. It'll be fine. Get the opposite side. <laughs> All right, the nice thing about uh, this French cleat system is that 
this thing is completely in the middle so basically it should level out but I'm gonna help with uh, with this piece of equipment I'm not gonna use a spirit level because well the boat is five degrees tilting Degree. in all directions yeah. so I'm just gonna use this to level it out so once that is straight we can tighten up this one and the nice thing about these two holes is they are a bit bigger than the middle one so you can still correct a few degrees if you messed up your holes. I'm not gonna need that since this is perfectly level. Mandy's turn to hold the nuts on the other side and my turn to Spirit. tighten it. And then we can drill the other holes and that's just it. It's like five second job. I hold it, you tighten it. Oh wait, my tools. Yeah, done? Done. Hello! I'm gonna poke something through the hole. Careful! Here we go. Careful! So this one is then for the bottom attachment. Three on top, two on the bottom. Okay. Yay, we made it. Yeah, that's it. Surprisingly sturdy. So the bottom attachment has a bit of a plastic spacer. That means the screw won't... Jesus. Just wait a second until you do the video. The bottom attachment has a bit of a spacer. I won't get that much screw through the wall, which means maybe it doesn't even go through. That's why I'm going to use the self-tapping ones that came with the inverter. And in case I breach on the other side, we can still switch to these ones and get longer ones because I just got a bit shorter. We'll find out. It's an exciting adventure. Good, perfect. Then I'm gonna do the other one. Done. Next one is the installation of the mega fuse. Maybe the easiest is to just place it close to the inverters plus cable. I think I need a new drill. Yeah. See that? So bad. How's that possible? We had that for like a year. Bosch, <laughs> please. I need a Bosch. Heavy? Yeah. I need to put a ground wire on the inverter. And for that, I was looking for the ground of the boat which is right next to the engine. I have two bolts coming into the hull from an outside, whatever that's called. One doesn't look that great. So I'm just gonna clean that one, crimp a new ground wire that connects the two bolts. And uh, then I'm prepared to add the inverter cable as well. One of my favorite ways to clean stuff is to do it with the least possible effort. So the way I do that is I take 
little bottle and I put some acid in it. I just let it sit. And in about two minutes, it's as good as new. Not as good as I expected, but it's fine. All right, on to the new one. Guess what? Of course, the diameter of the bolt is bigger than the hole. Not a problem, because I'll just simply cut it. Easy. <laughs> easy! With the right tool, that's easy. Oh, I can do this, look. And now, I'll just open it up a bit. It's not ideal, but you do what you do, right? Another new day, finally it's Monday again and the boat shop is open, the boat store is open and today I got my crimped 70mm cables, they're freaking massive and the crimps are 78 volts and also 1.6, also 1.6 because I just wanted to be perfectly flush on the bus bars. That was a bit of a work, but now I got these. You wanna come in? Thank you. And I'm just gonna reseal the, what's it called? The shrink tube. Shrink tubes, thank you, Mendy. Welcome, just gonna make sure these are actually tight. <laughs> All right, guys, major progress has been made. Yesterday I installed a new bus bar in the engine room and this is where I'm gonna feed all the positives. One of the positives goes into the mega fuse and the mega fuse goes into the inverter. So that's what we're gonna do today um, and connect all the other cables. Filming this is just very boring. So here we go. Oh, by the way, here you can see the difference in 20 years of boat building. 20 years ago they made these cables 35 square millimeter thickness with a very very thick insulation but that made it seem like they were 70 because today's cable is 70 square mil diameter with insulation it's just as thick so i got fooled and technically i would probably need to change these cables as well also you can why you ask on 12 volts cables that deliver a thousand watts need to be thick this is because on low voltage, more current needs to run through the cable in order to deliver 1000 watts. And this generates heat. Big cables can handle heat. On low voltage, diameter matters when someone pulls a lot of power from your cable. All right, this is my 230 cable that goes from the inverter to the switch box. And I am using these ones to make a better connection on the end after I put the insulation off. If you make a YouTube video about this, tell people. Now I can pull these on top of it and I crimp those together. And then I have a solid piece of connection that I can put into my clamps. It's not what you would use professionally, but it's as close as it gets, but it works. Make sure you're not losing any strands and make sure that you de-isolate it enough so it actually ends up right on the front. Who am I to tell you all of this? I'm just a normal guy. That's the end result. And I think I could pass as a first month crimping trainee. Done! Ah. Now the fun part begins. I have to find the perfect order for the big fat cables. It's gonna be hard to film it because it's all like in this. So I'm just gonna show you the result. <laughs> Boom. 
pretty proud of that. So four cables, red, black, 230 and grounding. Everything's wired up safely. High five, high five guys. Last piece on the inverter installation is the relay, which has one out and two in. One in is the master and the other one is the slave, which means that whenever there's current on the master, the slave won't feed the circuits. As soon as there's no power on the master, the slave boots up. This is just basically two relays and it shouldn't be that expensive, but this one has a little timer in it. So there is a bit of a gap between switching one of the other. So there is no damage in case there is a millisecond of current on both of the inputs. So that's what I'm gonna install. Make a new cable from the shore power to the master in. And another cable from the inverter to the slave in. For the past 45 minutes, I was dawdling around and getting very anxious about getting these connections straight in. The housing is very compact, which is great, but we heard people in the reviews of this product that it is too tiny. And I thought, come on, like do, do a decent job. And then for the rest of the lifespan of the product, you have a compact housing in probably an RV or a little boat. So what are you complaining about? But it was, ah, it was so annoying. So Mandy came over and she just said, why don't you take out the board? And I said, that's a great idea. <laughs> So now I can just wire everything up and then put it back in the casing. What would I do without her? Sometimes Mandy's smart. Yeah, sometimes Mandy's smart. So why are you now fiddling around in that tiny corner over there? Well, the main cable cut the sides, of course. I have to get that through. And of course it's thicker than the other. And oh, it does fit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, so now I should make sure to not mess that up because that will break the inverter. Well, now think again. Slave, inverter, neutral is blue, is brown. Yeah, you said brown and blue. Brew. Bru this one is, okay. Am I doing a huge mistake? Okay, this one is a short power on the master without for the board. I have slave on the, yeah, should be fine. L was blau. Was N. Blau. Yeah. No, you said braun. And? Bra blauen. Blauen. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's the last one. Snap it. Snap it. And it holds. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything's in. Let's check again. Hm, blau. Hm, braun. Hm, blau. Erde, 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 Erde. So the relay box is attached to the outside cabin wall so the last job is to reattach the shore power socket and then we can turn it on nice it works it you can works. see it the master is active we have shore power sided 220s if I turn this on yeah. and we get no breaker breaking, yeah. we're one step further. Want to do it? Do it. Sounds good. And now it's time to start the inverter. All right. So connected is the inverter. The inverter is connected with the relay box. So if everything goes right and I turn the fuse in, I'm going to get positive and negative the inverter will start up, the shore power is out, so there's no connection, and the slave will turn on. All right, you ready? Yes, let's do this. Woo! Did you hear the clicks? I heard them. One click for the inverter and another on the relay. relay. So if I turn this on, we should get a beep. Wanna turn on the water boiler? Yeah. Ooh, did you hear it? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's now pulling almost a thousand watts. 12.3 and we were at 13.6 volts 
on the batteries but it is pulling I wonder what happens when you actually pull 2000 so next step would be to put the short power in and then see if the relay box turns off the inverter short power is in but is the inverter on well yeah it's always on but turn on the thing this one's on but the inverter is not using because we stayed at 13.4 hey so it works you did a good job babe thanks awesome doing it that's why so how did you like the video i haven't seen it yet why what do you mean i've been taking care of a baby all day oh that's true what happened to the batteries when we put on 2000 watts they went uh, a bit uh, lower than i actually expected i thought they were gonna stay somewhere on maybe 12 volts yeah they went down i don't know what was it 11.5 or something yeah yeah, it was really low. Didn't expect that either. Like we have good no. AGM now. And they were full. Super deep cycle. They're like yeah. they're made for heavy loads. Yeah. But they're still AGM. So like it's mm. a, the the inverter is a bit too strong for those batteries. I yeah. think if you really want to use it, then you should have lithium banks, lithium house banks. The the most we it could handle was kind of twelve hundred, without dropping too much. Yeah. Yeah. And I I'd rather have a inverter that's a bit oversized. Yeah. So. You know, also it's not the weakest we, link. Also, we didn't have a choice because we wanted a smaller one, but they just they didn't have it at the store. Anyways, let us know what you think. I think we did a pretty decent job. Alex did a very good job. Yeah. I mainly watched and tried to understand. Are we going <laughs> to see some Mandy next week? Uh, let's see. Maybe. What, what are we making? Let's find out. Oh, you haven't seen the footage? No. Oh. We're going to do some... Bye. Bye, thanks for watching. Oh, here's another, here's another clip. And I spent the last hour on the phone with my dad and the multimeter, figuring out if I made a huge mistake because on one of the plus wires of this boat, I have like a little sticker, green, yellow, which means ground, which implies that we have a positively grounded boat, which also implies that if I connect the ground with the negative on the inverter, that I will have a big problem. Explosions, fire, I don't know. Sinking. Meltdowns. Yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out, measuring resistances, if I have a positively grounded boat. And I don't. Everything's fine. And so I turned on the inverter. Wait, 